If you want to see how to maintain your Afghans so there's no mats and they have a perfect coat, keep on watching. Welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. I'm so excited today because we have an Afghan. And for me, an Afghan is like the king of all the coats, difficult to maintain, but when you know the secrets, it's easy. So today I'd like to show you all about the maintenance of an Afghan. Today, I'm very happy to have with us Isis, and her real name is Sayadena Nefertiti. She is born in 2014, bred and owned by Audrey Benoit. As you can see, Isis is a very curious dog, and this is common for Afghans. They like, they're very curious, they want to smell everything, they want to see everything. And as you can see here, she's checking everything out. An Afghan is normally very loyal to its family, and it doesn't really care very much about other dogs, except if they come too close. Then they will protect their own space and they don't really like other dogs intervening in their space. If you have an Afghan and you want to play, you throw a ball and he brings the ball back, then you are a very lucky owner. Most of the time the Afghans like walking and like running very much and actually hunting, but Bringing a ball back is another ball game. The Afghan has a very sensitive silky coat and on the top of their back they normally have a saddle and for the saddle they have like an overgrown undercoat and under the undercoat they have like a hard short coat which is normally a darker color than the whole silky coat. The maintenance of this coat is like for if you want to have a perfect coat, like washing every week. And we know normally never brush when the coat is dry. If you do need to brush, you always need to use a conditioning spray before you brush. And I'll show you why. Let's have a closer look at hair. Here you see two hairs. One on the left hand side in figure one, you see a nice smooth hair. For me, this hair is just being washed and had a good conditioner and everything is fine with this hair. The second hair has like scales on it. Now let's have a closer look. Here you see the hair, which has a very smooth surface. And here you see a close up where you definitely see all the scales standing open from this hair. This hair definitely needs nutrition. Let's now have a closer look to all the hairs all together. As you can see, with all the scales standing open, they can hook into each other. And that's the reason why you should never brush the hairs while they are dry. First of all, because all the scales are open, they can break off because they are very sensitive. They are prone to matting and tangling. Here you see Isis in the before video. You see her coat is very dry, it's uh, flaky, but Isis is no more a show dog. She's a retired show dog now and she's not being washed every week, but now every two weeks. You see uh, she has a lot of hair on her nose and she has a lot of hair on her back. So without any further delay, let's start the grooming. Don't forget, if you see me using any products and you're interested in these products, scroll down below. In the description, there's a perfect list of all the products I'm using. We're gonna start with the stripping of the saddle. It's very necessary with Isis, and we are going to try different tools. You can perfectly hand strip all with your fingers, with no other tools, you can pluck everything out, but you will have a much harder time if you do it with your fingers and your fingers might hurt after a while as well. So I will explain you a little bit about the products. Here you see the Showtech powder. This is like a chalk powder and when you use the powder on the coat, you will have more grip. If you have more grip, it will be easier for plucking 
and you can grip the hairs better to pluck them out. Then we have the grippy fingers. The grippy fingers will also give you more grip in combination with the chalk powder you have a fantastic grip. I have one stripping knife and it's the Sentinel W2 which I'm going to try to for the difficult parts. The other three stripping knives are knives without any knives themselves but just with a rough surface which is very good for gripping and it makes it easy to pluck all the hairs out from root to tip. Last but not least, in certain areas I will use the stripping stone. As all these materials are very good, they all work very good, but they all are a little different. One breeder likes to use the stripping knife and another breeder likes to use only the grippy fingers or even the stripping stone. It's up to you to test them and to choose whatever is good for you. Here you see me applying the powder. It's very easy, I just poured a little bit in the bowl and when I pour it I have the special powder brush and the special powder brush absorbs all the powder and the only thing you need to do is dab it on the coat. There's many breeders who would do the stripping after the bath but even for the gripping it's so much better if you put some chalk on the coat and you can imagine that if you would do that after the bath you wouldn't get all the chalk powder out so I really always do the stripping before the bath. Here you see me putting on the grippy fingers and let's do some stripping. I'm showing you with my fingers the width of the hip and this is the width we have to strip from the neck to the tail. Keep in mind young puppies of an Afghan sometimes take a year or year and a half to grow the saddle and to be able to pluck where the saddle is. It's not good to force it. It's also not advisable to cut a lot. The only thing you can do with a puppy Afghan is be patient and wait. So now this is just repetition. When I strip, I would, I, <laughs> when I strip, I really like to pull a few hairs to the front and then I see where I have to take the hairs and I take the tips of these hairs and take it to the back. And then I repeat and I always do these two movements. Of course, when you have a coat like Easy's and it's been like all winter and it's very long and it's very much easier to work with a stripping knife or the other tools. Here I'm using the Sentinel stripping knife number two and as you can see it's going very quickly and here you see with my hand doing a gesture like this it means that I really would like to take the tail out and when then you see the bum from the side you have a nice round bum and there's no hairs sticking out in this area. Also then when the dog is waggling its tail or it's, it's running and it's running with the tail up, you will see a nice tail and a nice back leg. You won't see any hairs in between. Here you see me lifting up the tail again and seeing which hairs are still sticking out. The Afghan tail needs to be very smooth on the top and the sides and on the bottom you can leave a whole hair as long as possible. And here you see me switching over the table arm. It's very easy when you have a table arm which is totally 180 degrees rotatable. You can always reach the area you need to groom when you have an arm like that. Here you can see the difference between left and right, all the hairs, and here it's becoming nice and smooth. And here you see me using the pin brush. This is our Yento pin brush 6060 and I'll show you why I've chosen to use this pin brush. Let me show you why I've chosen this brush and why I like this brush so much. I'm going to use my pinky because my pinky is not very powerful and here you see how easy it is to bend all the pins. The pins are extremely flexible that means the pins will never hurt the coat or damage the coat. Here you see me slowly going away from the back and going a bit further upwards. It would be very nice to only pluck with the fingers, but it's quite hard for your fingers and for your muscles. 
and you, I personally can't do it for very long and I prefer then to use other tools to now and then in between the finger plucking help me to get through the dog. Here you see me again using my fingers and I'm going like the system like I'm plucking up and then when the hair is standing up and I'm taking the point and plucking down now you will also constantly use my brush. If I don't use my fingers, I use the brush to like brush up the small hairs and then I can see better where I need to pluck the next time. Here I was showing you that you nearly saw the skin in between so I have to be like careful not to pluck too much. We don't really want to have a bald spot. And here again you see me using the brush very much. I'm like brushing up the small hairs and then just plucking where it's necessary. And you see like the chalk lying on top and every time I pluck I have really a very good grip. It's not slippy at all. It's not greasy because like the, the calcium powder is like absorbing everything. And here I'm using the stripping stone. And here you see how much hair the stripping stone is plucking. And for the stripping stone, I'm like taking my thumb up in the coat and then I pluck and I squeeze like the fingers and the hair and then I can grip it very well. And here I'm showing you what I do again. I was like taking as well the hairs and then plucking them down. You don't need to take a lot of hairs at once. A few hairs at a time is good. You just have to take your time for doing this a bit at a time and brushing. And here you see me putting some more powder in the bowl and applying it with the brush. And here you see <laughs> how much powder the brush contains each time you dip it in the powder. So the saddle can go all the way also the neck to the end of the head. But because Izzy has not been shown a while and she's retired, Audrey has been cutting the neck. So I'm just going to do the top of the neck. I'm going to make sure I can strip as much as possible and also the sides I'm going to do later with the scissor. I'm using my left hand to stretch the skin so the skin can nicely stay where it is if we are plucking. And here you see me again using my brush to fluff up all the hairs and now I can just go over the points again it's also very important when you do that, that you have keep in mind the top line, that it stays smooth and that you don't suddenly have where the neck is and then suddenly you have the shoulder and the back and there's a crack in. I like to have it nice and smooth. And I like to also view it from different sides, so I'm sure it's all nice and smooth. And after a while, you have to like see the whole picture, so I don't really mind going back to the back as soon as long as all the hairs are nice, flat and there's no more sticking out. And here you see the top line. Here I have a little bit of a crack, so there I need to work a bit more to make sure it's nice and smooth or as smooth as possible. And as you can see here, it keeps on coming out again, the small hairs, uneven hairs, and you just need to go over it again and repeat and repeat and repeat until everything is smooth. Here you see me using the Sentinel stripping knife again. And as you can see, it goes really quickly with the stripping knife. Here you see me brushing because I've just noticed Maybe you think there's a lot of hair and you are stripping, stripping, stripping and suddenly I saw a part of the skin. So as you can see here, if I lift the brush, you have to be really careful. And the only thing you can do when that happens is do a little bit at a time. And if you have a show dog, there are coloring powders which you can use to hide the skin. The rest of the neck will be scissored, but let's do the head first. So here all the little hairs that are coming over need to be stripped. 
And here you see in slow motion how we are plucking. So here again in slow motion you see we don't really take a lot out at the same time. We take little parts out and we make sure behind the eyes it's nice and smooth. So you see the dog's head and you see the eyes. So you will see the sides here and we will leave this part like the part from the chin to the chest. We will leave the hairs as long as possible there. And here I'm using the solid stripper and now I've just switched to my hands and then the solid slipper again. When you see the afghan from the front it's nice that this hair stay and just like the face is as flat as possible and then like the hair is coming out of the chin and the chest is nice forward. I'm just going to use the scissor a little here because actually it's better we do the scissor work after the bath but as Izzy's coat is so long we've decided to just put a little do a little pre-scissoring before the bath. And how I do this, I try to go against direction and I just do a few scissor cuts and then I do a few scissor cuts next to that place and then again and then I comb and repeat. Here you see me doing the nails. The nails are not very long so I'm using the nail grinder. I'm just grinding away the sharp edges and making sure the nails are nice and round. The nail grinder has a cap, this one, and I'm only using this cap when I have dogs with really long hair because the hairs can like turn around in the nail grinder itself and that would be very uncomfortable for the dogs. You can just twist the nail grinder around to nicely round off the nails. For the ear maintenance we are using the ear care, the ear wipes and the bamboo sticks. As you can see the ears are quite dirty so I'm just going to drizzle in the product in the ears until it's quite a lot, quite full. And then I'm going to slowly gently massage the ear, wait a minute and then with the bamboo stick take all the dirt out. If you wait a minute, the product will dissolve all the wax and the dirt and it will be much easier to clean. I also liked to wet the Q-tips with the ear care so when they go into the ear they are nicely uh, wet and they can absorb more dirt. And then the outside, I really like to do the outside of the ear with the ear wipes, they have a product in it also to take the most dirt away. So then, as you can see here, all the ears are nice and squeaky clean and most of all, they smell very fresh. Today I'm happy to use Fraser Essential products. Fraser Essential products is from Australia. It's a very good cosmetic line for dogs. It's very well known for dogs with long hair, especially Afghans, and this is why today we are using Fraser Essentials. I'm going to use the squeaky clean shampoo to start with because Isis has a really dirty and greasy skin and it's very necessary to use the squeaky clean as the first wash because the squeaky clean will take all the grease and the oil from the coat. And as the second shampoo, I'm going to use the coat stimulant. This is a very good shampoo, very well known for maintenance of long coats. And this is a shampoo with 35 essential oils in it. So it's going to be very good for Isis's coat. To finish, I'm going to use the intensive coat conditioner. The intensive coat conditioner is a very good conditioner to maintain the coat between two dog shows. The intensive coat conditioner will moisture the coat and it has very much nutritious oils in it to maintain the coat so it falls down, it doesn't mat and it looks very healthy.
All Fraser essential products are made with essential oils and they smell amazing. Before I told you we don't brush an afghan without using a moisturizer, but actually washing an afghan, we don't even rub the afghan. So the only choice is, today we're using the Grumex Power Bather. There's a lot to be said about this fantastic system. And many people say, yeah, but you're using the dirty water again and you're spraying the dirty water again on the, on the dog. Yes, that's exactly what it does. But actually our dishwashers or our washing machines has the same system and all our clothes and all our dishes are very nicely washed. It's actually very easy and very understandable. And it's fantastic because it saves water and shampoo. Do you know you only have to use like a small little bit of shampoo and a little bit of water and you can wash the whole dog with this. Let's see. The only thing you need is a bath with a plug in it and you need to run the water about two centimeters. I always use my fingers and I'm, if my fingers are underwater, it's fine. A little cap of shampoo and you can start washing. Here I'm showing you on my arm how much pressure this shower head has. It has just enough pressure like to push in the skin. It's not too hard, it's not too soft, it's a perfect pressure. Here you see me how little shampoo we need to wash the whole dog. In this little bit of shampoo, it's like 30 milliliters, this little bit of shampoo has enough active ingredients to wash the whole dog. If you would do that with your hands, you would use much more shampoo than actually what is necessary. So I'm just going to dissolve the shampoo with hot water and put it in the bath. And now the shampoo is just with the other water in the drain. And now just start washing. And we don't really wash, we just go around with our shower head and we let the shampoo pressure like go everywhere on the dog and slowly let all the ang active ingredients in the shampoo dissolve all the dirt and the oils. This system is very good. You also save your own energy and you don't have to wash, you just have to go around and leave the shampoo at least for five or 10 minutes so the active ingredients in the shampoo can do the work. As you can see here, the water was really dirty. I don't really want to splash the face very much, so I decided to wash the face the traditional way. Now we are rinsing. And we are rinsing and here is actually without you seeing it but this is when the most dirt comes out of the coat so now the active ingredients have dissolved everything and we are rinsing all the dirt away and now for the second shampoo the second shampoo is the coat stimulant shampoo and here you can already see I've used just as little shampoo and you can actually see there's more foam creating. So it means because there's more foam that the, most of the grease is gone and the shampoo has the chance to foam more. Here as well, we are just going in circles or round and round and round with the shampoo with the shower head. And we are letting the pump and the pressure of the water do the work. Why don't we advise to actually wash and start massaging and rubbing an afghan? Because a grown up afghan has so much hair. If you would start rubbing and massaging and washing, you would actually create more tangles than necessary. And this system with the power pump is much easier and much better for not having any tangles afterwards. Let's do some conditioning and for me the most important is the conditioning. Today we are using the Fraser Essentials Intensive Care and we are not going to dilute, we are going to use it full on, leave it on for a while so it can, all the nutrition parts of the conditioner can 
go around the coat and make the coat nice and perfect for drying. We are leaving the conditioner on for minimum like 10 minutes so all the nutrition part can be absorbed by the coat and then we will have a perfect coat and it will dry fast and it won't have any tangles. Now let's do some rinsing. It's very important to rinse everything out at this stage. We don't want the hair to be sticky because of the grease of the conditioner. Now the hair and all the coat have absorbed everything which is necessary. Don't be afraid for rinsing. So this can take a while. Make sure your water is not hot but quite warm so it's easier to rinse. The water I use is approximately 36 degrees, no hotter because then the dog doesn't like this very much. So it's very important. Here you see a washed and a well rinsed Easy's. Here you can see how much water comes out of a magic towel. And I'm, I'm using the magic towel because it also saves me time and it saves me a lot of towels because the Afghan coat can absorb a lot of water. I've chosen to dry Isis with the Showtech brush because the Showtech brush is just a little bit more firm than the 6060 pin brush, which is actually very soft. And for drying you need like a little bit firm because the hair is heavy and wet and you also cannot do any harm with this brush because the pins are very soft and flexible. They are just a little bit more firm than the 6060. It's important when you do the Afghan hound that you make parts, for example the legs. You first do the back end of the legs and you follow from the top to the bottom, so you know for sure the whole back end of the front leg is finished. And then when you are finished, you twist the, like the elbow a little bit out, just like we would do that. And we can do the inside, and then we do the inside from the top to the bottom, and we make sure the inside is totally done before we do the front, and then we do the side. So then the outside side of the front leg is totally also finished and then we go to the front and then you are sure the whole front leg is done. I do this with all the parts of the afghan. I like part the shoulders and the, the tummy and so I'm, I'm like drawing lines in my head and I'm sure after I finished everywhere is done. So I use hot air not too hot. Too hot is very bad for the hair. As the afghan has a sensitive coat, I use like warm air, not really too hot. And I like brush until the whole dog is nice and dry. And then I can, I'm sure that where at the skin, it's not going to stick at the skin. It's going to be nice and loose brushed and that's exactly what we need. Also here, you see me working on the back end. I'm gonna also part the back end. I'm first gonna do like the whole outside. Then I'm gonna do the back of the back leg. Also from the top to the bottom. I'm also never gonna twist my brush. I'm gonna brush like this. I'm never gonna do like this to brush. If you do this each time, you first of all, you are going to hurt the skin and the brush is going to break here on the top. So always brush nice and flat and never do that. An easy way to maintain the afghan coat is actually while he's lying down on the table. And the only way you can do that is making the puppy used to lying down as soon as he's arrived at your house. And if you make him lie down on the table, you will have a very easy and fun way to maintain the coat for the rest of its life. I would also never advise a slicker brush for maintenance of the Afghan coat, even if you have an Afghan at home. I would advise always to use a pin brush. Why would I advise a pin brush? I would advise the pin brush because it has very flexible pins 
and the pins, there's not so many pins. If you have a slicker brush, there's more pins, they are smaller, they are not so long, and you will pull out some hairs. And I think with an afghan, if you have an afghan at home, or if it's for the dog show, it's important to have a perfect coat without any breaking coat. And if it's important, I really would not advise using a slicker brush. For the finishing touches, I've decided to use the 6060 pin brush and I'm also going to use the Showtech pin brush. I'm going to use the Utsumi Ulton pink comb and the Yento Ultimate poodle comb. Here you see me using the Fraser Essentials brushing spray because it's not abs absolutely not greasy and the hair will fall nicely loose and I just like this spray very much. And before I forget, I would like to show you our top from the Jumbo table. This has a very thick layer of anti-fatigue mat and it's just very comfortable. And the top of the Jumbo table is full stainless steel. The anti-fatigue mat is a very thick but very soft to stand on. Here you see when we are making the movie from down upwards, there are still hairs sticking out. And this is exactly the ones that I want to get out before we let Isis go home. So here you see me doing the finishing and just taking the little hairs still that are sticking out. It's not a lot, but still we need to get rid of those. Here in slow motion, you see what I was doing. And now let's do some scissoring. I'm using the blender and I'm just blending the side of the tail and make sure all the parts where it's short and between short and long that it looks all very natural. And with the scissors, I'm just scissoring and going towards the end of the tail. And here you see me making the end of the tail like the finishing also smooth. It's no problem to scissor for the finishing as long as the next time you nicely finish with the stripping and the hairs which are now maybe being scissored that they are next time really pulled out. And here you see me with the technique scissor on the comb just to make sure all the tops which were sticking out they are also gone so that then we are left with a very smooth saddle. And here now I'm at the neck. There's a bit more work on the neck. And here you see me working on the side of the neck, which also can be short. And also I want to show more the shoulder. And I want to make sure when the dog is running that you see a nice long neck because now I have the opinion that the hair there was very much too long. So slowly, bit by bit, and here you see me putting my hand on the shoulder and the back of the dog, and I'm like following that line, and I'm like going short there where my hand is, at just in front of the shoulder. So when you see the dog from the side, the hair at the shoulder is not making the dog look longer as it is. And with my scissors, I'm always scissoring with the hair direction or against hair direction. I won't scissor diagonally. When the hair is down, I won't scissor like that because that will give me scissor marks. I also won't scissor twice or three times at the same place. I will go up or in I will go sideways or I will go down, but I won't do this three scissor cuts at the same place because also that would give me immediately a shorter place where it is. So I will scissor. I will keep on scissoring, moving my scissor on different parts and then combing and then repeating. And then you will have a very natural finish. And here you see the top view. And you see, I am like working on the neck to have a long neck and to make the neck as short at the side as possible. 
so it's nice and smooth. And now let's do some scissoring at the feet. You have to be careful with the afghan that the feet is not too short. But also I can imagine if you have an afghan and he's going walking and he's coming in with all the time the dirty feet, you would ask to do them as short as possible. Of course, if you have a show dog, you can also do the feet a little, but they need to stay nicely round and big rounds. So here we are going in between. We are also not going too short, but we are taking off just enough to make a nice round foot. And we are doing this by combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring again. And then when you think you are finished, comb again and scissor again. Because as soon as the dog takes another stand, he moves from his, he moves his balance, the hair, the top layer will be different and then, you know, you can still cut a bit more from the top layer. It's also advisable to use your scissor, not go straight, but, you know, turn your scissor so it's like going under the coat and not holding your scissor too straight. And here you see me using the sparkle spray. The sparkle spray is a fantastic spray to make everything shine. You can spray it on the coat, on your comb or on your hands and rub it on the coat. At the end, I decided to just put it in my hands and distribute it nicely over the coat because I could blend it more a bit everywhere. And to me, it had a very shiny effect. And here you see a finished Isis. Isis was a fantastic dog to groom. Thank you, Audrey, for letting me groom her. She's a fantastic temperament. She didn't move on the table. She was letting me do anything I wanted to do. And she was lovely to work on. Here you see what we were doing after the bath. We had a walk with Isis and here you see Isis running. And as you can see, she's wearing a snood. And for the people who, do, who don't know yet, an Afghan has very long hair on the ears. And if you don't use a snood to put the ears away while it's walking or eating, the ears will be absolutely very dirty and if they are eating they will go in the food and even you know be smelly afterwards so afghan ears if you need to have long hair on the ears the hairs on the ears always need to be protected most afghans wear snoods all the time the afghan maintenance before i forget an afghan puppy has even more difficult coat and an Afghan between one year and two years old is the most difficult in maintenance. This is where they have like a double coat. They still have the puppy coat and they already have a growing up coat. It will become better after the Afghan is two years old. In the meantime, we really recommend you wash one time a week and in between the washings, for example, halfway through, you can brush, but don't forget to use the brushing spray there or you will damage the coat. If you have an Afghan at home as a pet, we really recommend that you wash it every two weeks or you will have problems with matting. And in between two baths, you can brush, but always use a brushing spray before you brush to moisture the coat so you don't tangle or you don't break the coat. Here you see the before and the after pictures from Isis. You see a very big difference in the coat. If you want to see closer the products we were using today, please scroll down below. There's a link and there you will find all the products being used in this video. Please subscribe and thank you very much for watching. This was Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs and keep on grooming with passion and see you next time.